that is one of the joys and privileges of being a bass player, I think, is trying to come up with well-crafted parts that make the music more than the sum of its parts, trying to find a completing bass line, trying to find bass glue. Bass glue is very valuable. It takes some, some focus and some intentional decisions to come up with bass glue. Hey, how's it going? Today, we're gonna have some fun. One of my favorite things about playing bass is trying to come up with bass lines that can tie other parts that aren't necessarily working together together. Nice mellow vibes. And then I found this drum part to go with it. So yeah, like just kind of mellow rock vibes. This could be like a verse of a song. Uh, I'm not much of a singer, but we should have some sort of melody so that we can know how to serve the melody. That's one of the rules I think of bass, is like protecting and supporting the melody. So what if we did something like... Like that kind of vibe? Maybe I could do something with keys as a placeholder. So something like that, it's like not the coolest thing ever, but this is just an exercise, right? So don't judge me too hard. By the way, I'm gonna include this track for free for you. You can come up with your own bass line. The link will be in the description if you wanna download this track. The challenge is can we as bass players come up with something that makes this better than it is? That's the joy and the goal of bass playing, I think, coming up with bass parts that will make the music better. G major to an F major to a C. So we could just play the roots. It's a safe bet. But if we're gonna try and come up with something that's gonna tie this together, uh, there's a few tricks that I like to use. Uh, I'm just gonna give you some stuff to think about. Really, really listen to the drums. Doom. 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 Okay, so it's like a two bar phrase. Uh, there's some little articulations that the kick is doing towards the end of the phrase. But the main thing is the downbeat of one and the uh of two. So like one e and a two e and a. Two. Mm. That's kind of the main heartbeat. I usually try and find the heartbeat of the song. So what if we were to play the downbeats of the chords and then also the kick pattern. Notice that the chords aren't changing on the kick pattern. So what we could do then is, let's let's try that. So adding a little accent note basically. So that's kind of working. That's kind of helping tie the drums to the chords because they're not really matching up right now. We have the drums doing this syncopated thing on the uh of two, and we have the chords on the downbeats. So kind of by doing that, that kind of ties it together. But then we have the melody. Let's listen to the melody. Pause. Pause. So if we're gonna do something cool or melodic in the bass line, I think it should be like a call and response to the melody. I think a lot of bass players, they get excited and they play a cool fill and they do it over the melody. And that's dangerous because you can 
you can detract from the melody. I like to think of bass playing as kind of like you're a bodyguard for the melody. Like anything that you do is going to make the melody cooler. So if you're going to do something on the melody, it has to be like a counterpoint or like something that's going to like make the melody um, more interesting. If you do something in the holes in the music, kind of in between the melody uh, motion, there's a lot more freedom there. So if we're going to do something, I would do it in between the phrases. So like... something cool there something cool there so let's mess with that let's try that as an idea we can kind of combine those roles something like that so i think it's going to be i think it's probably two different things like it's probably like I would probably start low on this low G, root, and then, and then maybe like something like that. Like that's old school sounding. That's kind of got that 70s vibe like. And then maybe on the second one, something like that's strong. I think this is the wrong bass. Bear with me for a second. I think uh, a lot of times tone pairs with parts. Sometimes the tone helps lead you to the part. So I switched to the semi-hollow bass. I've got it on the gold foil sound. And then uh, I think we could use some compression. So here's like what it sounds like without compression. But like with the compression, help giving us some more sustain and fingers but what if i switch to a pick i think this is kind of cool so instead of like this we could go kind of gives it like a strong attack and then the compression's giving us a long decay but then we can use our palm to kind of control that so like something like this Uh, here's an idea. Maybe a, uh, the sound's getting close, but it's not quite there. Leather pick. Sometimes that's just the thing. Let me just vibe with this for a minute. Sometimes you just have to try some stuff. Like, I think this is the right bass. I'm not sure if it's pick or finger style or which pick, but I think we're getting closer. something like major and melodic on the gap in the melody and then punchier during the the movement of the melody I think it's uh I think it's up here. This is one of my favorite places on the neck. This kind of like in between five and twelve. It's just I don't know. Bass lines like to hide out there. Uh and then I think we'll kinda alternate. We might go low, we might go high. But I think there's something around this. Okay, 
Okay, so here's what I'm learning. I think I know what's supposed to happen, and that's it should not be locked in. Some songs, I have a theory. I think some songs, there's like a perfect bass line that you need to discover, and then you just like always do that. And then some songs, I think there's like, it needs to have freedom and it needs to flow and you shouldn't lock it in. But you can kind of find like the sweet spots or like the good, good areas. Like I, I think for this one, I think it's like this in between the the seventh fret and the 12th fret. That's one of my favorite places on the bass. I think the line wants to live here. And I think like there's this main motif that's like, Like that's money because it ties together the kick drum accent and the chord changes in a way that sort of just glues things. We're looking for glue here. That, And then what you do in the hole, in the gap in the melody, maybe something like, or maybe something like, or maybe something like, or maybe it's just something that you just have to, like you just have to feel it. But it's some sort of pentatonic-y, chord tony, uh, woofy sound that you fill the gaps in the melody with and kind of accent with the kick drum. And like obviously you don't want to do a fill every time. You want to leave space for the other musicians. If you just groove. is you're like listening like I think that's the key is you like listen to what maybe the drummer's gonna do a fill maybe the keyboard player is gonna do a fill maybe guitar is gonna do a fill maybe you just groove maybe if you're not sure what the kick pattern is gonna be you just go back to whole notes and you just flow with it so I think this is an example of a song that's like maybe there's not a perfect thing that exists maybe it's just like you kind of like find your places you find your sort of motifs and then you just flow with the band and you just flow with with the energy of the room. I think that's how I would probably approach this one. Maybe there's not a perfect part. Maybe there's like a motif of a part and you just flow with it. I think bass is super fun because sometimes it's not about finding the coolest thing. It's about finding the thing that serves the music best, finding the thing that ties the song together the best. That is a really fun puzzle a fun challenge. I love that about bass. Sometimes you can say the most by saying the least or finding just the perfect little part to play. Like I think for me it was it was this area the like that that was my favorite thing I found. The like I don't know. That's the kind of thing that makes me love playing bass. Like a little simple part like that it just feels good to play I think it makes the band sound better I don't know if you're into this kind of thing I think you're gonna like this channel because that's the kind of stuff I love to talk about and celebrate is like pocket bass playing and what makes it cool and what makes it fun if that's overwhelming for you I do have a bass course for string fundamentals where we go in depth on how to like find these ideas like how to find uh, all your chord tones and your major and minor pentatonics and where all the notes are, how to lock with a drummer, a lot of really good stuff. It's about a two and a half hour bass course. And I'll put a code there too, so you'll get a discount. Uh, and also, I'm going to put this track in the description as well. So if you want to download this track that I made and practice along with it, uh, that's yours for free. I'll put a link to that in the description. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. And uh, I'll see you on another video soon.